Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today, I'm very excited because we're talking about one of my all-time favorite ecosystems. This beautiful underwater world is sometimes called the rainforest of the sea. Today, we're learning all about coral reefs. Let's get into it. I'm wondering if any of my friends are maybe already familiar with coral reefs. So before we get started, take a moment and pause the video, discuss as a group or think to yourself, what is a coral reef? What kind of stuff would you expect to find there? All right, let's take a look. Like all ecosystems, coral reefs have biotic and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are the living parts of the environment, and abiotic factors are the non-living parts of the environment. Let's start with the abiotic factors. Some of the non-living things that we find in and around coral reefs could be something like the water. Coral reefs are usually found in tropical places, and tropical places are near the equator where it is warm and rainy for most of the year. The water where corals grow is usually warm and shallow and usually filled with bright sunshine during the daytime. Of course, there are lots of biotic factors or living parts of coral reef ecosystems, including the coral itself. Let's start there. Corals are classified as animals. They're a type of nadarian, as are their relatives, the jellyfish and the sea anemones. And an individual coral actually is a whole bunch of tiny little animals called polyps that all work together to survive. For most corals, polyps kind of look like and act like upside down jellyfish and like jellyfish, have tentacles that are covered in stinging cells called nematocysts. Nematocysts are used by corals to defend themselves from predators, but they're also used by corals to grab tiny little pieces of food that are floating by in the water. And while they do get some of the energy they need from the food they eat, they get most of their energy in a different way. Most corals are home to a microscopic little algae that's called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae lives within the tissue of the polyps and like all algae gets its energy from the sun using photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process used by algae and plants which takes energy from the sun and converts it into sugar or usable energy for the algae or the plant. In this case, the polyps get to take some of the energy from the algae to use for themselves and in return give the algae some nutrients. This zooxanthellae, which is so important for giving coral energy, is also the thing that gives corals their bright, beautiful colors. Now I should also mention that there are some corals that live in the deep, deep sea where no sunlight can reach at all. Those corals do not use microscopic algae and they grow much, much slower than algae in shallow water because they don't have as much energy. There are two main groups of corals. There are soft corals, which as their name tells us are quite soft. Those are the ones we see kind of waving around in the ocean currents. There are also hard corals. And in hard corals, the polyps create and live inside of this skeleton structure made of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is also called limestone, and it happens to be the same stuff that a snail's shell and a clam's shell are also made out of. Coral reefs are typically mostly made of hard corals that are growing right next to each other or often stacked on top of each other. And some coral reefs can grow to be enormous. The biggest coral reef in the world, the Great Barrier Reef, reached 1,500 miles at its peak. That is twice the length of California. All the cracks and crevices that are formed in and around corals create perfect places for little animals to seek shelter. And that's one of the reasons why coral reefs get their nickname rainforest of the sea. Because like a rainforest on land, there's lots of food and lots of hiding places, so tons of animals call this ecosystem home. 
Both coral reefs and rainforests on land have high biodiversity, which means there's lots of different types of organisms that live in this place. Bio means life or living things. Diversity means different types of things. So if we have biodiversity, we're talking about the different types of living things. Scientists estimate that one quarter of all ocean animals call coral reefs home at some point during their lives. As we mentioned before, lots of animals live in and around coral reefs because there's shelter, there's protection from predators. Animals like small fish and shrimp and crabs, they rely on the corals to protect them from predators. But meanwhile, predators like moray eels and sea snakes and reef sharks, they're gonna be using the coral reef as their hunting ground, somewhere for them to go to get food. Even enormous animals like humpback whales will use coral reefs. They come to these shallow protected waters as a safe place to have their babies. While coral reefs do provide hunting grounds for predators like sharks and sea snakes, coral reefs do have a couple predators of their own. Crown of thorn sea stars, parrotfish, some sea slugs, and other animals feed on corals and the algae that grows on them as a main part of their diet. And even though there are a few predators that like to eat coral reefs, predators are not their greatest threat. Unfortunately, as we've seen with other animals as well, the greatest threat to coral reefs is not predators, it's people. Climate change is a threat that impacts ecosystems all around the world in a variety of different ways, but for coral reefs, the threat that climate change presents is it's getting warmer. As the atmosphere gets warmer, the ocean absorbs some of that heat and also gets warmer. Corals cannot survive in water that is too warm. When it becomes too warm, they get stressed and they expel all of those microscopic algae that they rely on for energy. Without them, the coral struggles to survive. And without the algae, they lose their bright, vibrant colors and actually turn white. When this happens, we call it coral bleaching, and we've seen it happening in coral reefs all around the world. While coral reefs being destroyed is of course a problem for the thousands of animals that depend on them, it's also a problem for people. People rely on coral reefs to protect coastline from storms like hurricanes. We also rely on coral reefs for food for people. The fish that rely on the coral reefs some of them, we fish as food for ourselves. Many places where coral reefs are also rely on the reefs for business, for money. They have tourists come in from all over the world to go scuba diving and they rely on that money for their survival. So as we can see, if coral reefs disappear, we've got a big problem for wildlife and for people. But luckily, there are things that we can do every single day to protect coral reefs and all the animals that live there. The first and most important thing you can do is reduce your impact on climate change by doing things like using less energy. For more information on how to reduce your impact on climate change, please be sure to visit our greenhouse gases adventure. Something else you can do is support one of the organizations that's working to save coral reefs by adopting a coral or making donations. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about one of my all-time favorite ecosystems. If you would like to do quizzes, projects, activities, so much more, please be sure to visit that link below, and we'll see you at our next adventure. Bye!